Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone is having a great and productive day. Um, hope everyone is having a great week as well, by the grace of God. Uh, just trying to get back to these weekly devotionals. Um, trying to stay on top of it and do them every week, as I hope that I would do. Um, please, please, please continue to pray for me because I really need it. I really need it to even just to stay on track with these and do these every week. Um, but this week, actually, we're continuing on where we left off last week. Last week, we were going through Judges chapter 6, verses 11 through 16, uh, which was the beginning of the life and ministry of Gideon. And this week, we'll be continuing in verse 17. Now, so far, the life of Gideon, we've been shown that Gideon was found in a wine press, in a place of pain, in a place of fear and uh, no hope and despair. And God finds him and says that, Gideon, all that pain that you've been experiencing, I have purpose for it. That although you've been in a dark place and you feel like you've been in a dark valley and you feel like you have no hope, I'm promising that I have come to give you hope. I've come to rescue you from this place of pain and instead trade you and give you purpose. See, um, Gideon realizes and says that, okay, God, well, I hear you, but I'm the least in my family. How is it that you're calling me? And God comes reminding him and says, Gideon, it doesn't matter what you think you are, or what the opinions of people about you, but that I have chosen you. I am calling you. And Gideon continues and says, okay, God, well, so I'm not considering the opinions of people anymore, but now, God, I don't have the experience, the education, the military victories. I don't have, I haven't won all these big battles, Lord. What is it? Why is it that you are calling me? And God responds to him and says that, Gideon, I am choosing you. I have equipped you. I have put something inside you. I have made you a mighty man of valor. I have, I'm raising you to be a leader, to be a leader of the nation, to uh, lead out the Israelites from their oppressors, the Midianites, and to free them now and forever. And so now, Gideon, I have chosen you. All you got to do is trust me. Now, I believe Gideon realizes that the call of God is not to be taken lightly. That the call of God is to be taken very serious. And so now Gideon realizes that, okay, God, now if I'm going to say yes to this, if I'm going to say yes to anything, God, I need something more than just you speaking to me, but I need your approval. I need your endorsement. I need your uh, seal that you are with me and that you will walk with me. And so then we find ourselves in verse 17, um, continuing today, where it says, Then he, who is Gideon, said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who talk with me. I'll read it again. Then he, Gideon, said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, show me a sign that it is you who talk with me. Now see here, Gideon responds to all of God's requests and all of God's replies and says that, Okay, God, I am willing to say yes, but I need to know that you are with me. That, Lord, if you are with me, I need a sign from you saying that, saying that I am the one talking to you. I am the one who is walking with you. I am the one who has called you. And Gideon here realizes that, God, I want to say yes. Although my preliminary response was a no, but it seems like it is you who's calling me. But I need something more than just a call. I need a, a confirmation. I need an endorsement. Gideon realizes that from experience that it seems that the the yes that he wants to give to God is not to be taken lightly. That the yes to God's way and the yes to God's will, um, it's building a direct line of communication between him and God. Him and God are building a relationship right then and there. And he realizes that the divine connection that he's having, that God is putting into his heart and into his life and into his soul, that Gideon needs that. Gideon needs to be connected to God for him to do anything. But realize that on top of the connection, he needs a confirmation. And so Gideon says that, Lord, I'm willing to say yes. Lord, I'm available to you. My heart is open to you. But I need a confirmation from you. I need a sign that it is you who is working in me, who is talking to me, who is walking with me. And so now Gideon says, confirmation is what I need. I need a sign. And so what I realized about this whole sign that Gideon is asking for from God is that Gideon isn't necessarily saying that God I don't trust you or God I don't believe in you but is saying that God before I move forward I want to know that you are walking with me that you support my decision you support my ministry the call on my life that this purpose is from you and you alone see I believe that Gideon's 
um, request for a sign. Gideon looking for a confirmation should re resonate with us today. How many times have we believed that we received an idea or that we had a vision or that we had a ministry in mind or that we had a new business, we had a business venture, we had an investment that we wanted to make? How many times have we sought the approval of God for the things that we feel that God has put on our hearts or that come to our mind? How many times have we seen our businesses fail and not succeed? Have we seen our ministries crash and not get started? How many times have we seen that things that we expected to flourish and to grow don't do so? And a lot of times I believe it's because we don't ask for the approval or the endorsement of God on our plans, on our ideas, and on our visions. Gideon realizes that without the approval of God, without the endorsement of God, I can't be successful in my ministry. My ministry cannot flourish and grow. All that, all these plans that I may have and all these ideas I may have cannot move forward without the endorsement and the approval and the confirmation of God. See, and I believe that Gideon doing so realizes that once I've received confirmation from God that it is him who is calling me, I can now totally relinquish control over from my life and give it to God to take control over all these things. So that as I give God control over my ministry, God has given, now given me the confirmation. I can say, okay, God, you take control of all these things. You're in charge now. Because it is you who has called me, I'm trusting you to do what you do best with my life, with my ministry, with my purpose, because I've asked you for confirmation. Gideon, from the call, He's saying yes, saying yes, I'm, I'm available to the confirmation and now relinquishing control. Realizes that this is just a giant plan of him saying, God, I'm available to you. God, I want you to use me. Now use me the way you want to be used me. You want to use me. But now you are in charge of taking control, of making sure this all works out, of making sure that this is a success, of making sure that this uh, is approved by you. And what I see in the text is that Gideon reminds us to seek approval from God over our ministries, over our business ventures, over all the plans, the decisions that we want to make, that we should seek God's approval first, that a willing yes is always great, but a confirmation from God cannot hurt at all one bit, that it won't hurt to ask God for approval, to ask God for his permission, to ask God for his endorsement on our plans and on our life and on our ministry. On the things that we want to move forward. The business partner that we want to get into business with. Maybe we should ask God for his approval first. The new business that we want to start. Maybe we should ask God for his approval first. The plans that have come to our minds. And we believe it's a good plan. But a good plan at the wrong time is still a wrong thing. But a God-ordained plan at the God-ordained time is a good thing and always a God thing. And so... Today, I believe that God is reminding us to do three things. That as we hear the call of God, don't only be willing to say yes, but seek God's confirmation. But not only seeking God's approval, His endorsement and confirmation over your life and ministry, but also seeking and giving God control, complete control over your life, over your ministry, over everything that you're involved in. So remember these three key things. Be willing to say yes, to hear the call of God. Be willing to seek the approval of God and his confirmation. And then be willing to relinquish control over all things so that God can do what he does best. Turn the impossible to the possible so that your river of blessings never runs dry. And simply say, God, show me a sign. God, show me a sign that it's you who is working with me, that it is you who is calling me. It is you who has put his hands over my life. God, show me a sign. Hope that you are blessed by this weekly uh, devotional today. Hope that this blesses you throughout the week and carries you, reminding you that you can always go back to God for confirmation. And as you hear the call of God, be willing to relinquish control to him and allow him to do what he does best. Hope that you are blessed. Blessings.